So, um, hello. Today we'll talk about KOP Build, uh, a tool that we created at the Kernel Live Patch uh, team to make the creation of Live Patches easier, right? So, who am I? My name is Marcos. I'm working for SUSE for almost five years. For these five years, I spent three years in the L3 team working with BTRFS, Ceph, and other um, storage and other, uh, uh, other issues and other <laughs> projects. Projects, and for one one year and a half, I'm in the Labs Core Architecture team, uh, working in creating kernel live patches. Um, so that's the agenda for for today. I will give you a quick recap about kernel live patching subsystem and how this works, about uh, the tooling before KOP build, what we use it to 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 use. Uh, problems that happen when we create live patches and things that we need to take care of. Um, support for uh, live patching on Slee, uh, KOP build, and the future, which I will talk about KOP convert and uh, how this impacts our live patch creation, right? So first about kernel live patch subsystem. Uh, first of all, a live patch is just a kernel module, like a driver, like uh, a .ko file. Uh, that has uh, specially uh, special uh, structs uh, to to set up the live patching. Uh, so the module loader it keeps some elf information about symbols. Uh, so the live patch subsystem it uh, it can look for some um, symbols that are not exported. I will talk more about it uh, later. Uh, we use f uh, f trace. F trace is is what we we use to set up the live patching. Um, and so we transition every task, which is not calling a, a function that will be live patched, uh, to, to transition to a patched state. And if that, and if that uh, uh, task is using the function to be li live patched, it will be retried again. And the transition is finished when all tasks are in the live patched state. So this is uh, the sample live patch that we, ha we have in the kernel source. It's the most simple one uh, that we we uh, we just replace the command line in the proc command line output with that this has been live patched instead of the entire kernel command line. And here it shows basically the structs that we set up to create the live patch. So this is the so this is the entire module. So we have the KOP funks where we show the the name of the function that will be live patched and the new function that should be called instead. And, uh, and then we have the KOP patch on the other side where we, show, uh, where we link the, the objects that will be uh, live patched. In this case, is the, is the VM Linux itself. If it's uh, other driver, it, we, we should uh, name the, the driver on the KOP func struct. And on module init, we just enable the live patch so this makes the live patch subsystem to call ftrace and, and to start the entire process. Um, so live patch prerequisites and tooling, right? So uh, we, we have some prerequisites about it. And the first is that live patch shouldn't depend on other modules. So we shouldn't. Um, request for the customer to load additional modules when we are creating a live patch. Um, live patch is a standalone module, as I said before, it's just a, a normal KO file. Um, we should create a live patch for all supported code, uh, for all supported code streams. Currently, we support 69. I checked that yesterday, 69 different code streams. Uh, but that changes for day to day because they, they get uh, out of support. Uh, live patch check if the symbols used or live patch are available on all su supported architectures. And we currently support x86, the default and RT, the S390, and PPC64. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, I would like to talk about KOP CCP. KOP CCP is the, basically the heart of the live patch creating process, uh, about how we do it. Um, what it, what it does, it, um, sorry, uh, all scripts and tools that we have uh, do the setup or process the output of the KOP, the KOP CCP. Um, 
And what it does, it process kernel code and creates a closure of code to be live patched. So um, as I said, a uh, live patch is a standalone module. So every definition, every function, every uh, uh, reference needs to be standalone. So uh, what we set up on KOPCCP, we, we set up the object directory, the search directory, the live patch object, uh, if it's a specific module or, v or v VM Linux, the IPA clones, uh, because some, some functions they are inlined, and so we need to live patch the colors. All colors of that function should be live patched then. Work directory and <laughs> a lot of other information. Um, as I said, uh, tooling is, is pretty important in this case because we have a lot of things to feed into KOP CCP. Uh, we have CCP policy scripts, which check for which symbols that uh, will be live patched or used, if they are exported or not, and other checking about which includes to use or which definitions to copy and paste in the final live patch. And also, KOP CCP needs the entire command of the original source code, how it was uh, compiled or generated the object code. So that huge uh, command line that the, the kernel creates for that file, so it needs to be fed into KLP CCP. And what's the, the output of it? So it generates a file uh, containing all the functions that will be live patched per source file. So if we have, like in that case that I showed before, uh, then later I will just show that we have this command uh, line proc show here. Uh, this exists in one file, right? So we need to pass that file and that symbol and then KOP, CCP and works around everything. And it gen generates the code. So, and it generates a list of, of symbols that are exported and not exported, so we can handle that later. And for not exported symbols, KOP, KOP CCP generates a list of externalized symbols, uh, which are uh, pointers to symbols that will be populated at module init phase using KO sims lookup. Because as they are not exported, we need to, to use them either way, so we ask the kernel to provide the, the, their addresses so we can call them uh, to make the code uh, to behave like uh, before. And we just include the fix for that specific problem. Uh, so we have the KGraph patches, which is a repository that we use to process the KOP CCP output, which is a spec file. This is uh, responsible to set up uh, um, the, the, the basic project to, to create the, the live patch. And we have different branches for different kernel families, because they have uh, different um, module in it. Uh, or because we need to lock modules uh, lock on the most recent ones, the 15, uh, the 5.14 kernels. So we we ended up uh, having different uh, branches for different kernel families because of some differences they they have. Someday they should be merged. Uh, I hope because it makes things easier and we don't need to think about which one to pick. Or yeah. Um, we have the KJR tests, which is uh, Python scripts that uh, use QMU that install the live patch RPM gen generated and call a reproducer of the bug, which is usually a bash script or a C file calling some syscalls or um, yeah, just setting up something to test the exactly function that are being live, are, are being live patched. Uh, it runs VMs in parallel, so sometimes it's very quick to, to test if the fix was applied correctly. Stores the output and stuff, and expects a, a, a well-defined structure of directories for the live patch to be tested. And so that are all the tools that uh, we currently use. Now I will show uh, some, some problems uh, while creating these live patches. Um, so, code streams have different configs enabled or, or not. Uh, so, we need to check uh, which of them are affected uh, and how they are affected sometimes, because sometimes uh, modules are built in, sometimes they are external modules, and we need, so this needs to be adjusted. 
case by uh, case by case. Files got renamed between code streams, so this is how so needs to be adjusted. Um, different uh, object files uh, that are parts of a module. Very recently, I was checking one of the live patches that I needed to create, and on upstream, that object file was part of one module, uh, but in the older code streams, that were two different modules that was using that same object, that same object file. So, as I said, it 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 can change drastically between code, between code streams. That doesn't happen a lot, but won't happen. We need to check case by case, too. Um, so we can have code in line in different architectures, because different architectures use different uh, strategies to compile code and to optimize. Um, so when the code is in line, we should, uh, we should patch all colors of that code, because it's in line, it's copied. So we need to make sure that all colors uh, of that function are also live patched. And we have the, the IPA clones, uh, which is installed by installing the kernel live patch, kernel default live patch uh, devel. And we use then the KGraph IPA analysis, which is a project that uh, get this IPA clones that is generated by GCC when compiled the kernel and finds uh, all functions that inline another function. Yeah, so it, it, it mounts a, a tree structure where we can uh, check all functions that are affected by that inlined one that we like to live patch. Um, and so, as I said, uh, the code can also be optimized, not inline, but optimized in a way that we need to inform KOP CCP to not rely on externalized symbols because they are optimized. So, and then they, it, it asks the KOP CCP to just copy the code instead of, of, re, of referencing it. And also we can have the problem of duplicate symbols. So <laughs> sometimes you are uh, just um, referencing an external, externalized symbol, externalized, and they are two symbols with the same name and you can end up calling the wrong one, which can cause uh, problems on runtime, or as a friend of mine said, on the client side. So on the customer side. Um, so yeah, so we should take a look in those cases where we are using an externalized symbol with uh, where the symbol is duplicate on, on a module. Um, so uh, the support for live patch on is on Sli. Each released Sli kernel update has one year of, of support. So if the if a new update is re is released today. Uh, uh, we will uh, create live patches until next year in the same day. So currently, I checked that yesterday we have 69 code streams being supported, being from SLI 12 uh, SP4, SP5, 15 SP1, SP2, 3, 4, and SLI 15 uh, SP4 RT. That's the first code stream that we have RT support. And we have the current list of all supported kernels and that uh, uh, page from Sousa. It's, it's updated each time a new code stream uh, enters support or it ends the, the support. So there is a list there with specifics. Kernel version, uh, start of support, end of support, code stream, and yeah, all information that's basically presented here. So, uh, KOP build. Um, so the project was born thinking about how it could be easier for the live patch author to, to create a live patch. Um, yeah, it, it does a lot of stuff. Uh, the first one is create a default message, uh, uh, including the necessary information for the, um, for the end uh, live patch. It does a good amount of checking about duplicate symbols, symbol availabilities, if the file is there, which configs are there, if uh, which uh, code streams are affected for a specific uh, CVE, checks for the kernel source for all patches that are backported or, or not, or if they are missing. Sometimes we get issues while create a live patch that some patches were backported, uh, missing some stuff between uh, uh, the code streams. Um, and so we then talk to the live, uh, to the developer that, that backported the, the fix that also happens. So we need to take a look in the backported solution. Um, 
it checks for the final build live patch and checks because we we run KOP CCP in our in in our machines, which which is x86. But some symbols that KOP CCP thinks they are available here, they are not available in the other architectures. So KOP build downloads uh, the modules and kernels for. PPC 64 and S390 and, S3 and checks if the symbols are there. If not, so the live patch author needs also to include them or to ask KPCCP to avoid using externalized uh, symbols or dead specific symbols. And it, it, it already uh, creates the structure uh, that KGR test we will use uh, later to make the, the testing. So, yeah, it's an entire suite. Uh, for live patch authors to use, making it easier. Before this solution, we have scripts. So from time to time, okay, now I, I need to check if I have the uh, updated sources. Okay, now I need to check if the symbol is available, and I need to check. And yeah, from time to time, it's easy to just forget one of these steps, and some of these mistakes uh, take a huge amount of time to just redo everything again. So that's why KO Build was created. Um, here are the basic uh, steps to, to create a live patch. Uh, so the first ones are, are environment and variables that I used to set some default directories because it's, it's easier to set that by default because that doesn't change. Otherwise, if I change the KOP data here, we'll need to re-download uh, a couple of RPMs all over again because it, it, it checks if the code streams have the data already downloaded. So that's just an example of how this is used. So the first step is to call setup, and then we pass the CVE number, the BSC, the Bugzilla entry for the live patch request. Uh, and this is used to create a directory inside the, home, inside, inside the work dir directory, uh, which I call it a project directory. So that's all contained there. And the CV number is used um, by the KOP build to search on kernel source for all uh, backported fixes uh, related to the same to the same CV. So we can just grab those those fixes and, and apply later. So here I would just use the same example that I showed in the beginning to change the command line proc show. So this file funks expects one file and functions there. Um, and then uh, we need to, to inform the affected architectures. So here we, we support only three, and we can pass any of them or all of them. So after the setup finishes, we call run CCP, which calls KOP, KOP CCP, passing a lot of information. Uh, I, will, I think that I have this here. Yeah. And so it generates the output LP file that we that we will use in the next part. Push, uh, where we, we push the, the, generate the finalized source code to IBS and then wait for it to finish. Yeah, it's just uh, an easy way just to... to it, it's, it's like OSC status when we, call, when we push something to IBS using OSC, so it's, it has a similar behavior. Prepare test, we, which creates the directory that is needed by KGR test to, to test the live patching. Currently, we, we, up, we upload the, the results to three different servers, one x86, one PPC, one S390, and we run the tests there for these three different servers. And then I, I, I created this KOP format patches, which basically call git format patch, but including uh, all um, all code streams that are affected by that specific uh, live patch. Uh, so this is the same file than before, but now generated with KOP CCP. That's, ex that, that's the exactly same file. So in the beginning of the KOP P command line proc show, I just added a new PR info, my fix here. So let's say that this code needed uh, a fix, like to check a pointer or something like that we would include uh, uh, here at this point, and the rest of the file, yeah, not the rest, but <laughs> that's the, the only function that we live patched. And so we can see here that we have the KOPE saved command line. So that happens to be a 
yeah, I forgot to include the, the symbol. Okay, but then just to, to show you that that's uh, basically a sharp pointer. Uh, and this is, a, this is a private symbol. This is not exported one. And so we don't have any way to reach that symbol. So we have that structure there called KLP, KL Sims Relock. Which, <clears throat> which then uh, is used on module init just to make sure, just to call KOP, uh, KL Sims lookup to find the address of that symbol and to assign that to that pointer. So we can just uh, the reference on the uh, live patch function. So that's what uh, KOP CCP does for, for us. It detects the symbols that are not exported, creates these externalized uh, variables, symbols, and creates a basic structure for us to, to search for that symbol on runtime. So as I said before, uh, KOP build does a lot of checking, uh, verifies if the files exist in different code streams, if the object exists, symbols, duplicate symbols, and it creates a JSON file to include every necessary information for the, for the next step, which is the run CCP1. Uh, just showing here that we download RPMs for all affected code streams. Uh, that's a couple of them. I believe it's eight. Eight RPMs that are down, downloaded per different, code, per different code stream. And we have the PC, uh, PPC64 and S390 here just to check for symbols, uh, for the externalized symbols after the CCP ends. Uh, 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 it's processing, just to make sure that the symbols are available and not crash on the testing phase. And it looks in the kernel source for the patches and yeah, things that I told you uh, before. They run CCP2, it grabs uh, a lot of information just to, to be able to find uh, uh, all affected code uh, around the function that we like to, to live patch. And currently we can parallelize the KOP CCP, so we are processing four files uh, at a time. It consumes kind of a bunch of, of memory, so I fixed it to four until now. It grabs um, two or three gigs using only four, uh, 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 only four instances, uh, in my experience at least. <laughs> and yeah, and for the cases where some uh, some code is optimized, we can rerun CCP again using the minus minus avoid ext and passing the symbol name. So KOP CCP is instructed to not, to not use an externalized variable and to copy the code and yeah, so it works on all, on all architectures the same way, right? And at the end of the run CCP, it, it grabs, uh, it, it, it checks for all gen generated code and groups it so we can minimize the effort of creating different versions for the different code streams because at the worst case, we would need to, to create 69 versions of the same code, but never happened. But I had to create about 10 or 12 recently. Uh, because of minor uh, changes between the code streams, but there are some codes where we just need to 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 create one live patch or two because the code doesn't change much. Uh, for example, some some more obscure drivers. Uh, uh, that's the case, but for networking and stuff, it tends to to change quite a bit between the code streams. Um, yeah, uh, KGR tests and. Uh, KGraft patches and KOP build push. Yeah, just uh, apply the fix. We copy the, gen the generated uh, output for KOP CCP, apply the fix, push to IBS, check the status if the build is, is okay. Uh, the live patch author needs to create a script that will test and try to reproduce the original, the original CV or at, or at least hit the same code that is live patched just to ensure that we didn't make any, any mistake, just to ensure that it, it won't crash or, or anything like that. And this, and this script will be used by the prepare tests, which will create a basic structure for the KGR test to be run. Uh, currently, it downloads all gen generated RPMs from the IBS, copy the test case, copy the JSON code streams, 
and creates a tarball, and then I transfer to the three different servers that we use to test. Uh, uses Cumulum currently and two other VMs for PPC and for X390. And then KJR tests, which is the, the last step uh, of the live patch preparation, which starts VMs that installs the RPMs with the live patches, runs the script and expects it to fail or not. And yeah, and stores logs and stuff so, so we can check what went wrong. Uh, currently, we have some macros to, to make sure that the live patch function was actually called because it's easy just to, to get excited and create the, the test and the, the live patch function isn't called. So now we make sure that the, the function that we just live patch is, call, is, is called by the test. So yeah, so I, I, I try to, to cover all aspects of applying the live patch and ensuring that the code is called and it works at least it, it returns the expected output. And the last one, just create the format patch that creates the format patch, uh, cover letters and with uh, all uh, necessary information for the live patch reviewer, um, including the all code streams that are affected by that specific live patch. And yeah, it's basically a format patch with other stuff. It copies the, the commit for the test case too, which is stored in a different repository. But yeah, that's basically it. And some considerations about it. So as I said, uh, we still need to think a lot <laughs> when creating a live patch. We have a lot of differences between the code streams, tools, and, and things that can go wrong or can be different. Um, we have some tools like the KGraph IPA analysis that could maybe be integrated into the KOP build. Or when we pass a function that is in line KOP build can, okay, this function is in line to this, 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 and in five different functions, it could, yeah, automatically just warn the live patch author and say, okay, I'm doing this because this function is in line, so I'm, I'm using the, the colors instead. Um, yeah, as the result of this tool, I've, I've learned a lot of stuff about uh, live patch creations, um, about the details, and about uh, 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 everything about uh, KOP, CCP, and kernels, and differences, and stuff. And we have a plan, maybe to one day open source the KOP build to enable um, OpenSUSE and maybe other users to other distributions to create live patches for their own machines. It, would, it wouldn't be difficult, but it would require uh, to rework some code to avoid re rely on ZLI binaries and on IBS. But yeah, that's not a pri uh, pri priority right now. KP build is still under, under heavy development. Uh, but once things calm down, there's a plan, there's a plan for uh, open sourcing it. Um, so the last topic that I would like to talk about is that uh, about the future of live patching. Um, so Chaos Sims was, um, was removed from upstream to be used for out of tree modules. So our current approach wouldn't work in the future because how would we use symbols that are not exported otherwise? So there is the KOP convert or something like it because <laughs> uh, there are discussions about the naming and how it's being used until this point. So what it does, <clears throat> it post-processes the final KO file, the final module. It creates relocation entries for all undefined symbols. And then, um, and then the kernel module, uh, the kernel loader, once this uh, loads this, this uh, live patch, the, the kernel itself would call KO sims because it's inside the kernel, so it, it is allowed to do that to look at the symbols, and so everything works out of the box. Yeah, I've been, I, I did some tests for the KOP convert for our, um, re, for our released uh, live patches, and it worked flawlessly, yeah, as, as we expected. And so once this got merged in the kernel, maybe you can uh, uh, start using it, and so we wouldn't need to rely on this on this uh, uh, um, resolving here. These steps here could be re removed, the relocation stuff, and yeah. Because uh, the KOP convert would just create relocation entries for that. 
Um, so uh, KOPCCP and KOPB would be need some small changes for the result uh, code. It would be a couple less code because we wouldn't need the, the externalized handling. And KOP build is currently being discussed on the mailing list since 2014. <laughs> it's, it's been there. Um, yeah, recently there's been some effort about uh, upstream it again, and so new discussions came into the light again about its currently usage and how we could rely on the output of KOP CCP and, and other users of KOP convert uh, could also update how they use the tool. But maybe it's time for us to make an extra effort for it to be merged recently, make our life easier, and yeah. <laughs> Okay, so do you have any question? Hi. Hello. Uh, great talk, Marcos. Uh, I was talking to Nikolai earlier today and uh, I had some ideas. Okay. Uh, I have three questions, two of them that lead to the third one. So the first one is, how long until you get a patch, a raw patch from an upstream mailing list and end up with the a patched machine, for example. Okay. How, how many hours do you take to do that? That depends. <coughs> we, we usually wait for someone to backport to, into the kernel source. That can be quick or not. That depends. No, on no, the uh, yeah, I mean, uh, okay, uh, once if everything that's is there. ready, you have no, no obstacle, no, no nothing? Yeah, it's a couple of hours. If the patch is, is straightforward and we don't have to create a bunch of different versions, it's a couple of hours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and on the, the second question is, um, you can't build it locally? You, you have to use IBS? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, maybe we can build that locally too. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but then, but, yeah, but then on IBS it builds for all supported ar architectures too. Okay. Well, yeah, so, yeah, because yeah. my third question is not related to releasing to customers or okay. anything. This idea I had while, while talking to Nikolai is, um, as a kernel developer myself, I build stuff and then I build the module and then I need to SCP the, the module to, to the VM and then reload everything. Okay. So uh, how difficult and if possible, how practical you think it would be to have a mechanism to like uh, develop on the host and then create a live patch that applies on, the, on my VM, and it's instantly I have the modification there. How, how difficult, you say? Yeah, how, how difficult it would be to, to implement this workflow. As okay. In, that's why I was, was wondering about the, how, many, how long it takes and mm -hmm. you can build locally. Yeah, so just to return to your first question. So sometimes the live patch creation step is very quick because the fix is sometimes minimal. But the process of creating a reproducer for the problem takes a lot of time, sometimes. So, and sometimes we, we try to, to reproduce a, a CVE, double free, and yeah, sometimes to the creation of live patches is one hour. The, the reproducer takes three days, let's say. But for you, yeah, it's, it's the same stuff once. Yeah, I, I would yeah. I like to repurpose live patching to yes. adapt to my development work. Yeah, that will be much quicker because maybe you just have one code stream, right? That's that specific uh -huh, machine that uh -huh. you want to create. But yeah, maybe we can talk that later about sure. uh, uh, how that would be possible. Yeah, make, maybe we can improve also KP build just to make this uh, easily to, to create for one specific case. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you.